For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto sanctification in Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, words taken from St. Matthew's Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It was a cold, damp, wintry morning in the city of Lourdes, France. And the cold could especially be felt in the home of the Subaru family, which was actually a one-room dwelling that had been a former jail cell. The father of the family, a man named Francois Subaru, stayed in bed trying to stay warm while his wife and children played and did small chores. Eventually, the eldest daughter of the family, a girl, 14 years old, named Bernadette Subaru, along with her sister and a friend, went out to gather wood for the fireplace. In fact, they went along the Gave River, the banks of the river, and gathered loose sticks right near a cave or grotto known by the French as Massabiel. And what happened next would change the world for the better and would make Lourdes, France, a central destination for countless pilgrims. The date was February 11th, 1858. Bernadette decided to take a rest, and so she sat down upon a rock near the river. And she heard a sound, much like the gust of a mighty wind, as if a big storm were coming. But as she looked around, the trees weren't moving at all. Again, she heard the same sound as a mighty wind, but this time she looked towards the grotto, the cave, and she saw branches moving back and forth. And behind those branches, she saw a most beautiful young lady, perhaps some 16 years old. She was wearing a white dress, She had a blue sash around her waist. She had gold and yellow roses upon her feet. And yes, a rosary hung over her right arm. Of course, Bernadette thought that she was just dreaming, imagining something. So she rubbed her eyes, but the apparition continued. And eventually, the beautiful lady nodded in greeting towards Bernadette. And then with her finger, she motioned Bernadette to come closer. And Bernadette obeyed immediately. And she then fell to her knees. Bernadette did And she grabbed her rosary and she attempted, she tried to make the sign of the cross. But she couldn't do this most simple act until the beautiful lady had first made the sign of the cross. At that moment, Bernadette was no longer afraid. And the two of them prayed the holy rosary together. And after it was completed, the beautiful lady bid adieu and disappeared. Now, altogether... There would be 18 apparitions of the Blessed Mother of God to St. Bernadette Subiru at the grotto known as Massabiel in Lourdes, France. Heaven had literally come to earth. Now, the Mother of God would ask that a chapel be built there. She would tell Bernadette that she wanted religious processions to be held as well as special prayers for the conversion of poor sinners. And when she was asked to give her name, the beautiful lady said, I am the Immaculate Conception. Perhaps the most wondrous of all the apparitions was the ninth one. When at Our Lady's instructions, Bernadette was told to go to the corner of the cave, the grotto, and using her own hands to dig into the earth until she revealed to the world a wondrous spring of water that has brought so many healings to both mind and body, and soul. O happy grotto at Lourdes, which was privileged to have the Blessed Mother stand upon that spot. And yes, O sacred rock of Massabiel, from which issued forth such wondrous healing waters. Over 200 million people have visited that wondrous sanctuary, that wondrous cave at Massabiel. They come with infirmities. They come with diseases. They come with cancers, they come as cripples, they come as blind. They also, in some cases, come with skepticism, with utter doubt, and even outright despair. No one has ever seen one spot of pain on this earth more than at Lord's. Yet despite all the pain and suffering, there is great peace, tranquility, and even outright joy. Holy Church, using the most strict standards including a very experienced medical board, has determined nearly 70 miraculous healings 
that allow no natural explanation whatsoever. There are also countless other miracles that go unreported, and they don't meet the high standards, or perhaps such a special little secret between the pilgrim and the individual Our Lady. And yes, there are those spiritual conversions. Spiritual conversions were men in doubt, were men who have lost the faith with men who are in utter despair. They come there and they are converted in an instant. And eventually they bathe in the waters. And then they, even more importantly, get absolved in the sacrament of confession. And then they receive the most blessed of all sacraments, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of the Son of God and Son of Mary. Now, if I were asked to define Christianity using just one word, I would use the word exchange. Christianity is a wondrous exchange between divinity and lowly, even miserable humanity. Think about our good Lord becoming man in Mary's womb. He took on a share of our humanity, and in exchange, he gave us the gift of sanctifying grace, which is literally a share of participation in his divine nature. And yes, he took upon himself the death that was due to us. He took upon himself all of our many, many sins. But in exchange, he gave us a possibility of eternal life and even a share in his very innocence. By his stripes, Isaiah says, we are cleaned of all of our impurities. And yes, by his poverty, St. Paul states, we are made rich in God's grace. We bring our darkness, we bring our infidelities, and the light of the world enlightens us with the gift of supernatural faith. And yes, we lay upon him the burden of our guilt, and he makes our burdens light, and he makes our yoke easy. And in just a few moments, Holy Church will bring to the good Lord simple and ordinary bread and wine, but in exchange, by the power of the Holy Ghost and the words of a Catholic priest, we will receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus himself. And yes, this exchange in which we get all the benefits occurs daily at Lord's France, where broken and miserable humanity lays its ills at the feet of Our Lady, hoping that through her all-powerful intercession, they may receive the healing of her divine Son. You know, it is said that St. Jerome, the famous biblical scholar, a father of the church, St. Jerome was in prayer one day, and he was saying to the good Lord, Lord, I have given you all things. I've given you my mind, my body, my soul, my time and effort. But our Lord appeared to him and said, Jerome, I want more. And Jerome, frustrated, said, what else can I give thee, Lord? And our Lord said, Jerome, give me your sins. Give me your sins so that in exchange I might grant you my mercy, forgiveness, and healing. You see, we must always bring our Lord something in this exchange, even if it is our misery. When our blessed mother came to Lord's France the 19th century, she came into a modern world very much like our own, infected with error, filled with darkness, and much coldness in charity. Modern man in the West, by and large, did not want to be a part of this exchange. He rejected his glory of being made in the image of God. From being made a child of God at baptism, he began to embrace that superstitious notion that somehow he was made according to the image of a beast. And yes, sanctifying grace and a supernatural life was exchanged for the gift of a purely natural life a purely worldly and secular reality. The gift of faith was replaced by reason alone. Belief was even replaced in some cases by outright atheism. A cult of worshiping man replaced the cult of the worship of the true God. A traditional life of penance and self-denial was exchanged for a life of overindulgence and sensual pleasures. At one time, man sought to cling to the Ten Commandments as that unchanging moral code. But modern man has decided to become his own lawgiver. 
and we live a life of moral relativism where anything goes. And yes, pure skepticism began to enter into the human reality. And as a result, we began to reject and dismiss anything like a miracle. St. Augustine, another father of the church, St. Augustine once said, I would not be a Christian if it were not for the miracles. I would not be a Christian if it were not for the miracles. Our dearest Lord lived a most perfect life of virtue and holiness. And yes, he taught a most perfect, perfect doctrine. And he fulfilled every single prophecy and prediction written of him in the Old Testament. But if he had not performed miracles, he would not have been seen as the Messiah. Yes, his countless miracles, in fact, were the supernatural signs performed to convince his listeners that he was and is the only Savior who must be adhered to along with his mystical body in order to be saved. And so when Our Lady came to Lourdes, France, she came there to compel modern man to attend to the Christian message. And so she brought the miracles of her son with her, and they are still being given to man through her hands to this day. For those who believe, no explanation is necessary, but to those who don't believe, no explanation is possible. You see, there are people who go to Lourdes who are very sick, and sometimes they come back completely cured in an instant. Some people with cancerous tumors find those cancers disappear in a moment. Sometimes deaf and blind come there and they began to hear and see. This is the ongoing story at Lourdes. Another crutch left at the grotto attests to the fact of yet another cure. But unfortunately, by and large, modern man uses the crutch of unbelief because he cannot accept the reality of an infinite God who loves him infinitely and simply longs to be loved in return. But here at the Grotto of Lords, at that cave of Masabiel, even the modern unbeliever, the atheist, the agnostic, or those in religious error can find true enlightenment and conversion. Case in point, a young Catholic woman, she was named Elizabeth. And she married an unbelieving physician named Felix Lesseur at the turn of the 20th century. They were married in Paris in a Catholic church for the atheistic doctor said that he would respect the faith of his wife. But immediately afterwards, Dr. Lesseur tried to break down the faith of poor Elizabeth. In addition to practicing medicine, he became an editor of a highly anti-Catholic and even atheistic newspaper in Paris. Elizabeth, for her part, accepted this fact and reacted by dedicating herself to the study of the true faith, including building up a library in her own house. Dr. Lesseur would have his own atheistic library in the same house. And this, of course, was a source of great division within the marriage. But Elizabeth's love for her husband, Felix, would still grow daily. In the early part of 1905, Elizabeth suddenly became deathly ill. And in May of that year, she lay dying in bed. Elizabeth said to her husband, Felix, when I am dead, you will become a Catholic and you will become a Dominican priest. Felix responded in a very defensive way. Elizabeth, you know my feelings. I have sworn hatred for the Catholic Church and sworn hatred for God, and I shall live in that hatred, and I shall die in that hatred. But Elizabeth just repeated her prophecy before passing away. After many tears and uncontrolled grief, Felix eventually discovered Elizabeth's last will and testament. It stated the following. It said, on the day I die, I shall have paid the price. You have been bought and paid for, Felix. Greater love than this no woman hath than to lay down her life for her husband. You see, Elizabeth had actually generously prayed for suffering. 
She had prayed even for sickness and even death in order to bring about the conversion of her spouse. Dr. Lesur, a man of science and an atheist, simply dismissed this as the religious fantasies of an overly pious woman. To forget his grief, Felix took a trip to southern France where he and his wife had had their honeymoon, and he stood outside a Catholic church in which Elizabeth had often prayed during that honeymoon. And he began to hear a voice as if it were Elizabeth speaking to him, saying, Felix, go to Lourdes. He was being told to go to that place of healing for both spiritual and corporal infirmities. And so Felix went to Lourdes, to the shrine of Our Lady, to that place of healing. The doctor had actually written a book against Lourdes in the years past, seeking to prove that all the miracles were simply superstition. But while standing before that cave, while standing before the Grotto of Lourdes, Dr. Felix Lesur, atheist and leading figure in the anti-Catholic movement in France, was given the gift of the Catholic faith so completely, so fully, that he needed no convincing, no argumentation. He was Catholic almost in an instant. Soon the good doctor would become Catholic and would eventually enter the Dominican religious order and would be ordained a Roman Catholic priest. Felix, when I am dead, you will become a Catholic and you will become a Dominican priest. That is the power and the message of that cave at Masabiel and Our Lady of Lourdes. Finally, during the third apparition, of Our Lady of Lourdes to St. Bernadette, the Blessed Mother asked the visionary, would you do me a favor? Would you have the kindness, the goodness to come to the grotto for 15 days? And Bernadette answered yes immediately. And our Blessed Mother was pleased with her generosity. Well, as a priest of God, I asked those present here this afternoon, would you have the goodness, the kindness, to come to the grotto of this chapel, this church, for five days. Starting tonight at 7 p.m., we will be having a parish mission or a special retreat for this parish of St. Anthony's. There will be confessions each night before and after each talk. There will be special hymns, devotions, and preachments, as well as good, solid religious instruction and catechism classes each morning, Monday through Thursday, after the 9 a.m. Mass. And the theme of our mission will obviously be Our Lady of Lords, for she can teach us so much during this time of error, infidelity, and coldness of charity. Now, granted, those of us here gathered this afternoon are not professed atheists, but many of us, in a way, act practically as so during the week. We often forget the supernatural is constantly surrounding us. We might act very religiously on the weekends, but sometimes we become very secular-minded during the weekdays. Mary sent forth a cry of alarm at Lord, saying, penance, penance, penance. And yet we often remain spiritually sluggish and unrepentant. Come to this mission, therefore. It's a very good Lenten exercise. And experience the full message of Lourdes and the healing that it is especially meant to bring to modern man. Be a part of the exchange by bringing your spiritual, even your bodily ills. And bring your contrition to the confessional. Offer your doubts and difficulties. And in return, in exchange... The Son of God, through Our Lady of Lords' powerful intercession, will offer you healing of body, mind, and soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.